In this video, we're going to create code in Excel VBA that allows us to loop through all of the items in a drop down list in our workbook. So you're probably thinking, what's so great about that? Well, I have this workbook and I have a output area here that reflects year to date sales for particular branches. Over here in cell G3, I have a drop down list where I have formulas linked to whatever branch is selected and it outputs the year to date sales that are specific to whatever branch is selected in this drop down menu. Over here I have an orders tab that feeds into this output based on whatever selected here. So um, this is just year to date sales that get updated daily based on our drop tab. And what we'd like to do is write code that loops through all of these items here, makes a copy of this workbook, and then saves each of these copies to a path on our network drive that the file name would be whatever branch name is selected here and today's date. So we'll get started here. So the first thing we want to do is go into the VBA editor window. I'm going to hit Alt F11 to do that. Anywhere in this project window, I'm going to right click, go to insert, and then module. We'll call this subroutine my files. And we'll begin by declaring some variables. So the first one is going to be WB for workbook. It's going to represent the workbook we're in now. It's going to be as the data type workbook. Next one is going to be WS for worksheet. It's going to be as the data type worksheet and that's going to represent the summary worksheet that we're on currently. We're going to have um, a new workbook and new worksheet that represents the new copy we're going to make of the existing one. So I'm going to copy this paste and just add in in front for new workbook and new worksheet. We're also going to have a variable called range and it's going to be as the data type range and it's just going to represent the cell that contains our drop down list values. We're going to have a variable called path. It's going to be as a data type string and that's just going to be the network path we want to save this to. So eventually we want to have our four files with the file names being the branch location and the date here like this. We want to save it to this path. Now I'm going to delete these out and copy the path that we want to save this to. So finally we have a variable called my date because we want that to be part of our file name so even though that's a date it's going to be as the data type string because it's going to be part of the file name and the file name is a string so first thing we want to do is set our workbook variable that is going to be equal to this workbook and it's an object so think of physical things like workbook, worksheet, uh, range. We need to begin with the keyword set because they're object variables. So we're going to set our worksheet that's going to be equal to our workbook we just created and then worksheets and the sheet name we're on now is called summary. We're going to set our range and that is going to be equal to the worksheet we're on now and then the range that contains our drop down list which I believe yeah cell G3. So next we have our path which is the location we want to save our file to and I copied that earlier so that's just that path. It's a string so it needs to be enclosed in double quotes and we're eventually going to join whatever the range object value is equal to and then 
you know, because that's going to be part of our file name, and then we're going to add um, our date variable, which is going to be today's date. So our date variable is just going to be equal to the output of the now function, which will return today's date, and then we want to format that in month, day, year format. So we're going to begin with the format function, and that has really just two inputs we need to input here. So the first one is going to be the output of the now function that returns today's date. And then the second input is how we want it formatted. We want it two digit month, two digit day, and four digit year. So now what we want is something dynamic that will allow us to loop through all of these possible selections in our drop-down list, make a copy of the spreadsheet, and then save it each time. So I'm going to go to our orders tab because that's where I can grab all the possible values. And I'm going to paste it here in, let's just do it in column J. I'll explain why we're doing that here shortly, so just bear with me. But just keep in mind, these possible values are in J1 through J4. So we want to repeat a series of steps, and we can do that with a for loop. Begins with the keyword for, and then you list a counter variable. We'll just call this I for iterator. And then you define a beginning point and a starting point. Well, we want to start at the first item, so obviously we want to begin at a count of one, and we have four items in our drop-down list, so we want to go to the fourth item. What we want to do here is reference our range variable we set, which is our drop-down list. So we want to reference that range and then make that equal to our worksheet variable, which is our summary worksheet reference the range that contains our possible values which is going to be J and then what we want to do is join that column reference to our counter variable so that when we cycle through this loop the first time this will be equal to a value of J and 1 because our count begins at 1 so we're essentially making our drop-down list variable in G3 equal to what the value in J1, which should be the east branch. Once we go through the next cycle of this, our counter will be set to 2, and that will make this range object variable equal to J2, and then so on and so on until we get to the fourth item. So now what we want to do here is make a copy of our worksheet and save it to a new workbook. So we want to reference our worksheet, which is our current worksheet. We want to use the copy method. And if we don't specify a destination, what this will do is copy this worksheet to a new workbook this new workbook will be the active workbook at that point in time so at that point we can set this to be our new workbook so our new workbook is going to be equal to the active workbook we'll go ahead and set our new worksheet and that's going to be equal to our new workbook and then worksheets summary So now what we want to do is take the formulas that are currently in this area on our new worksheet um, and copy and paste over them as values so that when we say these fi files they're just hard values because we don't want them linked to formulas. So we're going to do a couple of things. So we're going to use a with statement and reference our new worksheet. We want to take all the cells on that worksheet and copy them. And with all those cells again, we want to paste special. And 
what we want to do is paste values to paste over that entire worksheet as values so that they're no longer formulas. We're done with our with statement so we can end our with and now what we want to do is just simply save this file to our desired path. Now one thing I rep recommend when saving files in VBA um, a lot of times you might need to run this code again maybe you make an update to your file and you have to there's already the same file name out there in that desired path if there is that display you know the alert will pop up and say are you sure you want to save over this file well it's good to have but it will stop your code from running so what we want to do to prevent that is reference our application if I can type here and then display alerts and set that equal to false after that we want to reference our new workbook and then save as And the first thing we need to define here is our file name. That is going to be equal to a combination of our path variable, our range variable, which contains the current branch selected in our drop down list. So we have our path variable we defined earlier. We're going to use an AND symbol to join it to our range object, which contains our branch name. After that, we're going to use another AND symbol, join a space, because we want a space between the branch name and then the my date variable. So we're going to use another AND symbol, reference our my date variable. And then we want to add a file extension to that file name. So in double quotes, we're going to just say dot xlsx. So the next thing we need to define in our save as is the file format. So we just want the standard if I can type here, format. And we just want Excel workbook default. So now what I want to do is close out that workbook. So I'm just going to reference that workbook variable again and then close after that we want to set this application display alerts back to true and the only thing left is we want to go to the next count in our for loop so I'm going to use the keyword next and then reference our counter variable and that will take us back up to the top where this i variable changes to the next count which is two and repeats all these steps and does it everything again until we get to the fourth item in our drop down list so what i'm going to do is just hit play and what we should see is four files with the branch names and dates pop up in this folder here and it'll just cycle through our drop down list one branch at a time and that's what we should see so I'm just gonna hit play there's a little bit of lag time here because I'm recording my desktop so I do apologize and now I go back to this folder you can see we have our four files it's gonna take a little bit for the file to open and you can see I have the East branch file name is East branch with today's date if we look at the last one this should be the West branch it's gonna take a second there it is and you can see we have the data for the West branch so that is how you can create a 
loop in Excel VBA that cycles through all the items in a drop-down list that drive formula outputs on your workbook. That is all for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe.